Well, we finally reached the end of chapter 17 uh, of Young and Friedman's University Physics, and this last section is on heat transfer. Basically, we're talking about three ways of heat transfer taking place, conduction, convection, and radiation. So conduction has to do with a heat transfer, a flow of heat between two bodies when they're touching each other in some way, they're in contact uh, with each other. And we call this heat current H. Uh, it is a flow of heat. That is a flow of energy per unit time. Now, if you remember from a long time ago, um, power, energy per time, was watts. And although it's a little peculiar, it feels a little peculiar, we're gonna talk about watts in terms of the transfer of heat per unit time as well, joules per second. It's it a little bit hard for me to get my head around. When I think of watts, I think of a light bulb. Uh, but of course, light bulbs have heat too, so we're all one big happy you know, um, family. Um, we, we were talking about heat in terms of joules earlier in the chapter, and so uh, to talk about heat current in terms of joules per second and watts, okay, that it fits. Now, the heat current, here's where we're gonna set up a, an equation. Love the way physics does this. So heat current is proportional to cross-sectional area. So the bigger the cross-sectional area touching, the, the more heat current is going to flow. Um, it's also proportional to the temperature difference uh, between the two. Um, and so if there's a big temperature difference, then the heat is gonna flow faster. That makes sense too. Um, it's inversely proportional to the rod length. So the longer, so if you have a rod that's touching two differently temperatured things, the longer the rod, the slower the heat is going to flow. Okay, so uh, the way that physics works is we have all this proportional, inversely proportional. All we need to do is find, if it's, if it's a linear relationship, and that's kind of what proportional and inversely proportional imply, uh, then we're, all we need is a constant. Uh, and so here's the equation. H equals the change in, in heat per time, dq dt, that's a little calculus, uh, equals a constant um, of, I think it's thermal conductivity, uh, times the surface area, A, because it was proportional to that, times the temperature difference, uh, that should be, a, this, oh, sorry, this should be a small c, I don't know why sometimes PowerPoint does this, temperature difference across, and then divided by the length. And so there we have a nice little formula. Again, K is a constant of thermal conductivity, and it's gonna be particular to the different kind of material that you're actually talking about. Um, and it is, its units are watts Kelvin per meter, uh, or watts per meter times Kelvin. Okay, um, so this part of the equation, again, I hate the C should be small c, ah, but um, this part of the equation right here this side is called the temperature gradient. It is the difference in temperature per unit length. So we've, we've given names to the different parts of the equation. We've called this the constant of thermal conductivity, and we've called this the, the uh, what, temperature gradient, I think we called it. Um, and so those are what some of the pieces uh, of the formula are called. Now, what if the temperature is not flowing uniformly? Well, then we're gonna have to do a little calculus. Um, we're going to have to go down to the to the infinitesimals. So heat equals the change in Q dQ dt per time uh, is equals the negative uh, Ka dt dx, where dt dx is the change in temperature uh, per time. Um, heat current must be the same though uh, in all the materials. That is that that rate is going to be the same uh, through all the materials in succession. Now if you have parallel paths. Instead of, uh, instead of just one place where it's uh, touching, if you have two places where it's touching, then the, the total heat flow is going to be the sum of the flow in this one plus the sum, plus the, the flow in the other one. Okay, um, thermal resistance. This is some, something that you use in construction. A lot of times in uh, America, we are again old school, and so you talk about BTU, British thermal units per hour, uh, with uh, A in feet squared and change of temperature in F Fahrenheit squared. But basically, if you take the equation and you take L over K, remember L was in the bottom and K was at the top. Uh, and so 
If you divide by r, then that takes care of those two, and you're left with this. Uh, again, the h and the c should be small. Um, but, um, but anyway, um, uh, this is, the, the r is sometimes called the thermal resistance of a material. Um, that is sometimes is a a a uh, a number that is relevant to heating and cooling in the construction business. Okay, um, convection. So we've been talking about conduction. That's when two things are touching. Now we're going to talk about convection. Convection has to do with fluids. So conduction has to do with solids. Convection has to do with the flow of heat. In from one re of a fluid, a fluid could be a liquid, or a fluid could be a gas, because gases flow too. I mean, if you've ever seen wisps of air, you're seeing you know convections of, of air, and of course heat convection in fires is something that fire fire people have to learn about. Um, so there's force convection, um, like in my heart, my heart is a pump that forces the flow of, of blood in my body. May it continue for a long time. There's also free convection, you know, where, where it happens naturally because of heat differences. I suppose tornadoes are uh, uh, heat, a free convection gone amok. Um, so uh, we don't get a formula, uh, which suggests to me that it's a lot more complicated uh, than they want to get into in an uh, introductory physics textbook. Um, so probably that's going to get into some calculus in the advanced courses. Uh, but we can get some sense of, of what kinds of, of formula we might have uh, for convection. So heat current of this sort, a convection, is directly proportional to the surface area of, you know, of whatever solid is nearby. So let's say you have a, you know, a really hot surface here uh, and cold air. Well, then there's going to be a current that is set up that's directly proportional to the surface area of that, that solid that's near, near the liquid. Um, the viscosity of fluids uh, slows convection down near the surface. Um, and then, basically, um, the convection is going to approximately proportional to the five-fifths power of the temperature difference between the surface and the fluid. Again, they don't give us a formula. They just give us these broad, these broad strokes. Something to the five-fourth fourth power means you raise it to the fifth power and, take, and then take the fourth root of whatever that is. Okay, so that's convection. Doesn't go into a lot of detail on convection which leads me to believe that it's rather complicated and you'll have to take an advanced physics course. And you didn't think this was advanced. Okay, finally radiation. Every body admit, emits electromagnetic energy. I am right now. This is how you can, you know, infrared scopes that can tell where, uh, where people are in a building. Um, radiation is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves. And of course, electromagnetic waves go all the way from really, really slow waves, you know, AM radio waves, you know, to cosmic gamma rays and, and that sort of thing, uh, where the, the frequency gets higher and higher and higher and higher. Um, so radiation is a transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves. This rate is proportional to the surface area, again, of the thing, of the thing that's radiating or absorbing. Those are the two uh, radiation, radiating, radiating is when the heat is coming out, absorbing is when the heat is going in. So this rate is going to be proportional to the surface area. It's going to be proportional to the fourth power of, of temperature Kelvin. Um, so it, it, it spikes uh, according to the fourth power. Uh, the, the more the temperature, um, the more the radiation. Here's a new thing. It's proportional to something called emissivity. Uh, the emissivity is the ratio of the rate of radiation from a particular surface, so we're going to have to go to a chart to look for a particular kind of substance, the radiation from a particular surface, and then an ideal uh, radiating surface, that would, or, which is a black body, basically, something that would both absorb everything and, and radiate everything. This, is, this number, the emissivity, is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. And then, so basically, again, we're going to need a constant. We can create a formula here, right? Uh, H equals A times some constant times this emissivity times temperature to the fourth power, right? Uh, and the winner is the Stefan Boltzmann law, which is exactly as we've said. The heat flow is going to equal uh, the surface area times the emissivity times the Stefan 
a Boltzmann constant, which by the way is uh, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 watts times Kelvin to the fourth per meter squared, or watts per meter squared times Kelvin to the fourth, however you want to put it, um, times the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the temperature in Kelvins to the fourth power. Okay, so there you have it. Now, uh, since bodies both radiate and absorb, the net flow of heat is going to be basic, the H net is going to be this times basically the temperature difference, where this S is the temperature of the surroundings to the fourth power. And basically, if this ends up being positive, then it's giving off heat, uh, because uh, in that case, the, the, the temperature being emitted uh, is greater than the temperature of the surroundings. If this ends up being uh, negative, then that means that the temperature, uh, that energy is being absorbed, uh, and the temperature of the surroundings is greater than the temperature of the uh, of the thing. Okay, so there you have that. Oh, boy, I've gotten through this quickly. Um, black bodies and reflectors. So a good absorber is also a good emitter. If something is a total absorber, then it is also a total emitter, and I just told you that that is called a black body. That is an ideal radiator with an emissivity uh, of one. Uh, there, there is also an ideal reflector. This is something that would absorb no radiation at all, but would reflect all the radiation that comes toward it back into the environment. It's having a mirror, a mirroring kind of effect. Wow, that didn't take nearly as long as I thought it was, but we have now gone through this long last section of the chapter. Uh, of course, it had some formulas, and you need to do some problems to work it out, and there are some problems in the book, but may the heat be with you.